Bonjour famille, c'est moi, Nicolas Naturaliste, à la maison. <laughs> What's up y'all, it's Nico, and today I wanted to try out this new segment I've been thinking about where I like really deep dive into natural hair issues, um, discussion topics, you know, spread some in, uh, education, some information education when i was first starting out on my natural hair journey i did a lot of research i did so much you know not just going to youtube and watching tutorials but going online and learning about the actual you know scientific nature of textured hair why certain things work why certain things are really bad for your hair and that kind of thing so that when i go out and i actually you know see things happening to my hair to other people's hair i'm able to relate it back to you know this background knowledge this big bank of information i've just kind of gathered throughout the years so here i am sharing it with you sharing is caring and knowledge is power you feel me so the topic for today is a little issue called protein overload and she's a hoe straight up um the way that i found out about protein overload was that i got it in my hair and i had absolutely no idea what it was i got it with aloe vera using aloe vera and it was completely unexpected because anything that you see online on youtube you know in blogs anywhere talking about aloe vera all you hear is the praises all you hear is all of the good things all of the miraculous things that aloe vera can do for your hair you know why you should be using it blah 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 blah, blah. nobody told me that aloe vera the plant aloe vera carries a high level of a certain protein in it and when i put it on my hair um i used it as a gel and so it was sitting on my hair from one wash day to the next wash day. I take a week between wash days. So it was sitting on my hair for a week. And for that whole week, my hair was just coated in this natural protein. So my next wash day rolls around. And first of all, let me just talk about how the aloe vera made my hair feel initially. When I first put the aloe vera in my hair, um, I put it on top of a leave-in conditioner and it was going in really nice. My hair was feeling really moisturized. It was giving me a lot of slip. Um, they also say you can use aloe vera as a, a detangler. So just to give you an idea of how much slip it gives your hair, I had absolutely no idea what it was going to do to my hair. So it was feeling really nice. It worked well as a gel. I did notice after my hair dried that it was really like crunchy and stiff but that happens with a lot of gels that i've tried in the past so i wasn't you know it wasn't any cause for concern so then my next wash day rolls around and as soon as the water touched my hair i was like something is wrong something is really really wrong my hair just felt just automatically right when the hair my hair touched the water it was just dry and like it had this weird like coarse texture when i was rubbing it against itself um just nothing i've never felt my hair or seen my hair act like this before um and so it was really weird so i washed my hair like usual rinsed out the shampoo and then i'm like okay i'm gonna put some you know conditioner on this mug and it's gonna you know straighten up real fast because that's what you know that's what natural hair does and so i doused my hair in a bunch of conditioner and y'all i don't know it felt like my hair sucked up all that conditioner and then looked at me like and now what like it wasn't it was not messing with the conditioner like i again have never experienced my hair just completely not react to conditioner whether it's a deep conditioner regular conditioner leave-in conditioner so i was like really confused i was kind of panicking at this point because i was like you know if conditioner can't fix it i don't know if it can be fixed you know what i'm saying like Hi, baby, come here. So long story short, I ended up having to go online and looking up um, or trying to look up because I got no results, you know, what was going on with my hair. And so eventually, after searching for so long, I came upon one sentence, one sentence in a whole article that mentions protein overload. And I was like, I don't know what it is, but that's the only lead that I've gotten. And so I looked up protein overload all by itself. And um, I saw a lot of videos, a lot of articles come up 
talking about protein overload i was like this sounds exactly like what i have so then i look up can aloe vera give you protein overload and i find an article that's talking about how aloe vera does have um you know this certain kind of protein in it so basically i deduced from all of my research that it is a protein in aloe vera i don't remember what it's called right now but i'll look it up and put it right here this goddamn protein gave me protein overload on my hair and i was like freaking out thinking you know i was gonna have to cut my hair off or something like that there was no saving it um but there is there is hope so let's start talking about exactly what protein overload is how do you get it in your hair and most importantly how do you correct it okay let me not have y'all struggling out here like i was struggling okay so protein overload is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you load your hair up with too much protein and you start to experience adverse effects from that. Now some signs that your hair is experiencing protein overload is that it feels very brittle and very dry. It feels like very fragile. Um, you'll ex you will experience like a lot of breakage. Your hair is snapping off. That's how brittle it is um you'll notice that your hair doesn't have any kind of natural shine to it when your hair is is protein overloaded it just it tangles a lot it's it's very unmanageable like i said even when i was putting conditioner in it it's like my hair wasn't getting any slip like um it was still very difficult to detangle it and i was getting a lot of breakage while i was detangling it as well so a couple ways that you get protein overload is like i said how i got it um, aloe vera and the proteins in aloe vera giving your hair protein overload rice water is another big one that's a really popular um, you know treatment for natural hair that I see all the time you can also get protein overload from just regular protein treatments like the Afigy, um protein treatment is a really popular one but any treatment that is designed to put protein in your hair can give you protein overload that being said at home treatments that use eggs or mayonnaise or other things with proteins in them again just be very careful um about you know how long you're leaving these products in your hair how much protein these products have in it and things like that another thing is that people who have low porosity hair are much more prone to getting protein overload so all these videos where people are using aloe vera like all the time using rice water all the time and they don't experience any adverse effects and it's just great for their hair they probably most likely have low porosity hair and what that means is that there's a lot of spaces in their hair shaft where proteins are supposed to be but they are missing so the natural protein that your hair makes um, when your hair gets damaged it can lose that protein it's keratin and when you know either brushing too hard using chemicals dyes um even just being out in the sun too much uh, leaving your hair dry too much leaving your hair in a protective style too um, for too long different things can cause you to lose the natural protein in your hair if you lose too much of that protein um and that's where you start to get you know the the difference in in curl texture where your curls start getting loose and stuff where you're missing too much protein but if you do have low porosity hair and you are missing a lot of protein for your hair your hair will take to these protein treatments much better because your hair needs that protein so if somebody with low porosity or high porosity hair had put you know aloe vera on their hair for a week like i did um, it could have been really beneficial for them, but because I just did not need that much protein in my hair, instead of that protein slipping into cracks and helping my hair out, that protein just laid on top of my hair shaft and coated hair that already had protein in it with even more protein, hence all of the stiffness, brittle, dry, blah, 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 blah. So high porosity hair loves protein and protein treatments low porosity hair still needs protein but it doesn't need as much protein and it doesn't need um you know the treatment just doesn't need to sit on your hair for as long so if you are experiencing protein overload or you're trying to recover from it you really want to stay away from products that have protein in them not just straight up protein treatments but a lot of natural hair products um have ingredients with protein in them so certain ingredients you want to look out for are things like um, you know hydrolyzed collagen quinoa protein silk protein um, you know wheat soy keratin 
oat flour, amino acids, um, all of these things are, are proteins and they're added into hair treatments um, and natural hair products to help you. But you know, if you're experiencing protein overload, you're gonna wanna check the ingredients on some of your hair products that you're using and make sure that you're not putting more protein into your hair. So just keep an eye out for those ingredients and make sure that at least they're not too high up on the list so that there's like a, if you can't completely avoid these ingredients, which they are in a lot of products, at least make sure that you're getting like the smallest dose possible. I will say when I was recovering from protein overload, it did take me a good like six weeks until my hair um, started feeling like closer to normal again. It probably took a full two months before my hair was completely like back to its original state. So first things first, of course, is stop using products that have protein in them. If you're trying to get protein out of your hair, sis, don't keep putting it in. So like I said, those ingredients that I listed before, um, make sure that your products aren't um, you know, too high in those uh, ingredients and that you're not doing any protein treatments. Another thing is that you wanna make sure that you're shampooing every time that you wash your hair. So like I said, I wash my hair once a week. So every time I washed my hair, I did shampoo, whereas sometimes I might co-wash um, and alternate co-wash and shampoo. But while I was recovering, you shampoo all of your hair all of your hair not just the roots or anything all down your hair shaft um and although it might sound counterproductive especially because of the the state that protein overload puts your hair in this is actually going to help to wash away and break down that protein a little bit um so that you can wash it out next is that you want to deep condition with heat emphasis on with heat now i am an ardent advocates of using absolutely no heat on your hair um when i was trying to get through my protein overload i was doing my deep condition but i was just wrapping my hair like i'll put a shower cap on and then i will put like a plastic bag like a shopping bag on top of that and then i would put a hot towel around my head and that was the heat that i used i used my own natural heat from my head and then the heat from the towel if you are somebody who uses like um, hooded dryers and things then by all means um, the point is to open the cuticle to try and get your hair cuticle to open up so that the moisture from the deep conditioner can really penetrate the hair shaft and reach the hair that is being um, you know shielded by this protein coat that is over it so deep conditioners with heat if possible so lastly, you really want to make sure that your hair is super, super moisturized while you're trying to get through protein overload. Um, like I said, your hair can be left feeling very dry, very brittle, and it's very prone to breakage at this time. So by ensuring that your hair is as moisturized as it can be, you're going to um, you know, start to diminish those aspects and ultimately protect your hair from you know, breaking off at a ridiculous amount. I do the LCO method. That's like my go-to for years is doing a leave-in and then a hair cream and then an oil on top of it to seal it so a lot of people i know do the loc method which is just using the oil and then the cream on top lco works for me but that method of using the leave-in the cream and the oil um, in layers with each other is very very effective at keeping in moisture so i highly recommend um, doing the lco method while you're recovering from protein overload lastly use protective styles i know i know so many naturals <laughs> just love you know the wash and go wash and go life you know but when you're trying to recover from protein overload especially since your hair is so prone to breakage at this time you want to put your hair up and leave it alone you want your hair to be in a style that is going to have like the least amount of manipulation because every time your hair moves every time your hair slides against your clothes your shoulders um, every time you have to put your hair up at night or you know whatever you're doing um, to go to sleep every time you touch your hair you move your hair you manipulate your hair it is going to be you know very very prone to breakage and right now uh, when you're trying to get through protein overload when your hair is dry and it's brittle and it's so prone to breakage like you need to just moisturize it as much as you can and put it up into that protective style to get through this protein overload i mean put up up sis you know what i'm saying wear a wig wear a headscarf you know do a cute little halo braid something just get do something 
you know, some protective style to get that hair up and out of your way, get those ends tucked away and so that it'll retain all that moisture that you just put into it. It was so bad. God, those were dark times, man. Those were dark times. So that's the end of my video, y'all. I really, really hope that it helps somebody. I really hope that y'all don't have to be panicking and struggling the way that I was when I was experiencing my protein overload and just know that this is not forever, that your hair is not ruined, that it does take a while for it to go back, but there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, if you are experiencing protein overload right now, you should totally comment below like what exactly it was that gave you that protein overload and how long it took you to figure out that was the problem. If you were like me and just like panicking, thinking like, oh my God, I'm just gonna lose all my hair. Like, you know, we had a good run, but this is it. You know, this is how it all ends. Um, <laughs> hopefully nobody has to go through that, but that's the end of my video, y'all. Be sure to like and subscribe and share this video. Help your sister out. And peace. Until next time, y'all.